Ja, während Stefan Heyer jetzt schnell eine Küche rennt, sich eine Kerze holt, um sie dann vor dem Fernseher anzuzünden, sind wir jetzt hier in den Banana Studios in Harlem. Das ist gleich um die Ecke von der Südbronx. Ich sitze hier mit Jack and Dino, seines Zeichen Hausproduzent von Zapop und äh, Produzent der neuen Last Luck LP, die jetzt demnächst erscheinen wird. So, uh, how do you came to produce Last Luck? Well, they called me up actually. Uh, I think it may have been Tony's idea, but uh, I guess they've been listening to a lot of the records I've produced. Uh, some pop and other stuff uh, it seems to all be doing pretty well over here so uh, Reinhard from Glitterhouse called me up and one thing led to another and uh, here I am How do you came to producing records? Do you start pretty young when you just... Uh, not really, I was a musician first and I started in my basement like uh, a lot of people do you know, with their own sort of basement studio and uh, you sort of build up uh, clients you know people who like what you're doing and uh, you know eventually you can move up into a studio and then up to a bigger studio and then you can start uh, moving around to different studios uh, and doing you know producing other bands you know there's a certain kind of music that I'm known for producing and uh, you sort of have to specialize I mean some people do dance music and some people do uh, you know commercials or whatever and I just happen to do grungy rock and roll so but that's the music you like personally yes oh. yes actually I mean I like a lot of other stuff too but that's the kind that I, I enjoy producing the best it's the kind of music I play uh, when I'm playing music my boss Chris Hanzik um, actually has been doing it a lot longer than I have he was the one who did the Deep Six record a long time ago and the first Green River uh, EP come on down And the first Accused record and the first Melvin's record. He did a bunch of stuff in about 85, 86. Uh, and uh, originally had his own label, CZ Records, and he decided that he wasn't interested in running a label anymore and decided to just be a studio owner. And uh, along about the time that he quit doing that, I started doing it. So my boss, Chris, actually is the one that got me started on it, and I've sort of taken over that, that sort of scene uh, in Seattle. And when uh, you listen to yeah, records that have been recorded, reciprocal, there are a lot of records who are like the first Soundgarden or Matani 7 Inches who are on 8 track, but they got a total yeah, killer sound like other records on 6 inch track. Is there a special secret? Well, actually, the first, the first um, few years of sub pop stuff was all 8 track because that's what we had at reciprocal. Um, It took me a while to get the hang of getting the same sound out of a 16 or out of a 24. Um, the reason is the 8-track, it sort of has to do with the way you record on an 8-track. You only have one guitar track or two guitar tracks instead of five or six. Uh, you have one or two vocal tracks. You have just a couple of drum tracks, and so you have to kind of make everything count. You know, the performance has to be really good. You can't, uh, you can't overproduce on an 8-track. Um, so... You know, we had a lot of fun with the 8-track. Also, the 8-track was cheap, uh, which allowed people to have a lot of time to experiment and a lot of time to mix. And uh, there wasn't that same pressure that you get when you're paying a lot of money. And when you're doing this kind of grungy rock and roll, you don't always need all those tracks. The Nirvana album is written on the back cover. This album has been recorded for 600 bucks, which is, for European standards, pretty cheap for such a sound. Is it, uh, For American standards as well. Uh, that that record is funny. That is the very last 8-track LP that we ever recorded at Reciprocal. It is 8-track. That's why it's so cheap. Not only is it 8-track, but it was recorded a long time ago when the rate for the 8-track at Reciprocal was very cheap. Uh, and of course, I gave them a discount because they were my favorite band. And, uh, we, and in addition, they're a very fast band to work with. They did everything in one take. Uh, all of it live, one guitar, one vocal, one bass. Very simple. We didn't even use all eight tracks. Uh, and, uh, you know, the next record they're going to do, they've decided they're going to spend a lot more time on it. Uh, but it was a good record, you know, for the time. It sounds great, considering. You know, we really did only spend $600 on it, but those kind of records aren't really my favorite records to do. I, I like to have a little more time. 
Why is it so that, uh, especially from this one town, are coming so many, yeah, crunchy bands? Is mm. it a special climate there, or well, the Green River murders? The, the climate, the climate is pretty rainy. Uh, you know, it's foggy, it's rainy, it's kind of cold. People sit in their basements a lot. Uh, it's actually just has to do. There just seems to have been a certain group of people that all came together at a certain time. And it just happened to be right. Uh, a lot of the same people had been playing in the same little music scene for years and years in different bands. And uh, it's a pretty close-knit thing. Everybody knows everybody else. Uh, a lot of them have been in bands with each other. Uh, they, you know, Various of them have gone to different schools together. They've lived in the same houses. Uh, people in Mudhoney have been in different bands for years and years. And uh, the sub-pop record thing just happened to come into existence at the right time to be able to uh, take advantage of that and, and promote it and uh, you know I guess it's luck you know that so, you know next uh, you know few years from now it might be another city you know it could be uh, could be Madison Wisconsin or something who knows but Seattle just happens to be where it's happening right now yeah how about sub pop so sub pop is the uh Big, big media mogul in Seattle, or uh, yeah, they like to think they are. I suppose they are the um, definitely the biggest local label in the Pacific Northwest, or at least the perhaps not the biggest, but uh, Sub Pop gets the most attention. They do the most work. They put out the most records uh, of anyone from the Northwest. Especially Sub Pop has a some kind of certain style concept with art hair of the length length of the hair of the bands well and sub pop doesn't dictate the length of the hair um they do have a certain uh sub pop does have a visual style that they've tried really hard to um pin down all their photography is taken by a fellow named charles peterson real good guy has a real uh you know he has a style that is instantly identifiable you can tell a charles peterson photo there's usually a lot of hair waving around and a lot of motion like, uh, like the sub pop 200 The yeah, picture, that, yeah, the whole booklet yeah. of sub Charles Peterson, that's like the, the Charles Peterson primer there. Um, and a lot of it I engineer, so there's sort of a, you know, there's a consistent sound, at least with the with the Seattle stuff. Uh, I don't do all of it, but, you know, a good deal of it. Um, and uh, they have a certain group of designers who do their graphics for them, and uh, they have a very clear idea what they want. You play in a band, too, called Skin Yard. Skin Yard, yes. Uh, do you have still time to play there, or is it... Is it Not difficult. as much as I would like. <laughs> It is very difficult to say. I'm actually in two bands. I play drums for a band called the Crypt Kicker Five, which is kind of a, a, a sort of a surf punk outfit. Very strange band. Definitely not sub pop material, but that's fine. You know, it's a whole different crowd. Uh, I get to see different faces at those shows. And then Skinyard, which I play guitar for. And uh, it's, it's very hard. I wish I had more time for music. If I wasn't able to do music... I would get really tired of producing bands because if you don't have some musical outlet of your own, you know, you, you, it gets, you get jealous of these people, you know, sitting in there having a great time playing if you can't go home and do some playing on your own.